Good evening, friends. Hi, everybody. This is Serena. You're watching Now It's So Vivid, and today I'm going to do a thing, a thing that I've never done before. I, uh, I had to make a stop today at my local metaphysical shop to pick up a particular incense that I use as offerings to Morpheus, and um, while I was there, I picked up a, a couple of uh, other things. Um, I got some crystals. So I'll show those off first and make this kind of like a mini haul. But the purpose of this video, the main purpose, is to do my first ever review of a tarot deck. You see, I had been um, in the same shop a couple weeks ago and uh, I noticed a particular deck and my ears kind of perked up and I was like, oh, let me see what I can find out about this deck. And um, I, I was very intrigued by it because I am a fan of the artist that did this deck. It is a companion deck to the Tarot Illuminati, and it is called the Tarot Apocalypsis. And um, when I was researching this deck, I was very intrigued by the theme um, that they had used for this deck in particular, the symbolism that is used to represent the certain cards, and um, I've already gone through and kind of selected some favorites from the Major Arcana to share with you today, so that is what we are going to do, and I will give you my overall thoughts on this deck, and uh, if I thought it was a worthy purchase, and I'll start by saying that I had high expectations going in, so I leave you with that. Um, but before we get to that, let me just show off these two crystals that I got, because I have such, I have such a, um, a crystal problem, <laughs> but I I, uh, I do feel like I got a really good score today. So the first is this slam banging piece, this enormous fist sized piece of green calcite, and it's almost like dual colored. There's like this uh, sort of murkier, kind of redder color on the bottom that sort of gradually becomes this beautiful chartreuse green. I am a huge fan of crystals that are this color right now. I feel like it's really speaking to my love of spring, and um, I, I've always wanted a piece of green calcite. I've, I've wanted it for certain um, different spells that I've done, but uh, hadn't found a, an appropriate piece yet, and then today I saw this and I was like, what? <laughs> so I got it for a really decent price, and oh, I'm so happy. I'm so happy with this purchase. And also, I was introduced to a new kind of crystal today, and I um, I also thought it was reasonably priced, so I picked up a piece, uh, and this is called Iceland Spar, and it is also known as um, optical calcite, so it is a kind of calcite, I think, and it's clear, and it has a natural rhomboid shape, so that if you were to, like, tap this with a hammer and chisel, it would still have the, the um, I always forget the terminology, but the, the inclusions... The, the growth pattern of this crystal um, is naturally like this, which I thought was really cool. And I, I'm not one of those people who feels energy popping off of crystals too often, but this one, <laughs> this one I did, and I was like, I must have that. So, um, and like I said, I thought it was worth the money. So um, I'm just, I'm really pleased with it. It's also got a natural sort of like, there's some light play in here, and there's got there, it has a natural iridescence that sort of like pops off every once in a while. Probably not going to show up on the front lens of my phone camera, but I assure you, it's gorgeous. So anyway, we come at last to the tarot apocalypsis. I am going to swing the camera around so that we can get a proper look at some of my favorite cards in the Major Arcana, and I can go through some of my um, initial thoughts and um, do this do this proper review style. So here we go. So here we are, friends. Um, I already opened the box, and uh, I have to say right away that um, this this deck, this set, uh, was maybe a little pricier than some other sets. But honestly, just for the money, I have gotten a nice hardback book that is kind of shiny <laughs> and a very good quality deck of cards. Now I will say this much, when I bought the Tarot Illuminati, one of the things, one of the irritating things and the cons of that deck was that I didn't like the gold gilding on the side. Um, it was, I had no aesthetic objection to it, I thought it was obviously very pretty, but um, it kind of glued my cards together and I had to manually peel them apart, which of course was 
you know, very nerve wracking because I didn't want to damage any of the cards. And I'd been in a position in the past, <laughs> in sort of the recent past, where I had bought other decks that had come with damaged cards. And I was like, ugh, not again. So I was very, very pleased when I opened this deck to find that um, there is no gilding. Of course, that, that sort of makes it lose some of the shine of the tarot Illuminati, but I'm okay with that. And they're a lot smoother to shuffle than the uh, Illuminati deck. So I am okay with how these are printed. I prefer them over the sort of thicker uh, card stock that they used for the tarot Illuminati, and I'm certainly happy that they didn't stick together. So that's one thing. Um, and of course, because I'm such a fan of Eric Dunn and um, the writing by Kim Huggins. I am so into the artwork and to the level of detail that they've put into this book. Now, I haven't had a chance to go through the Minor Arcana yet, but I can say um, with a, a great deal of confidence that there is there we are not left in want <laughs> for the information that they provided for all of the symbolism that goes into the cards in the major arcana it is rich and it makes you want to learn more and i think that alone earns some serious brownie points for me because um i i enjoy i enjoy this about both decks that there is a cultural diversity that it's very sort of global um, you know, everybody's, I wouldn't say everybody's equally represented because, you know, the world is detailed and there's really only so much you can do in, um, you know, one version of the tarot, but they, they, uh, cover so many different, uh, mythic stories and, um, even some of the cards in here are represented by, by, um, similar threads throughout different cultures and stuff like that. Um, I'll try to find an example of that as I go, but I'm going to um, first start by, where is it? I want to find the paragraph. So I'm just going to read real quick uh, what the distinction is between this deck and the Tarot Illuminati. It says, the Tarot Apocalypsis is a sister deck to the Tarot Illuminati. Whereas the Tarot Illuminati was themed around illuminating wisdom, the Tarot Apocalypsis shows how the sacred is revealed. The word apocalypsis is Greek for revelation. And then down here, it says, In the tarot apocalypsis, each card reveals a mystery. The major arcana through the symbolism and teachings of mystery religions, mythic, pra mystical practices, pardon me, um, and then the minor arcana through four ancient civilizations and their everyday interactions with the sacred, and the court cards through the representations of deities worshipped in these civilizations. So... Already, we are introduced to this deck as, um, you know, worldwide uh, representation of different myths, different mysteries, and different cultural practices. That is the bomb diggy bomb. And I'm, <laughs> I could, when I first read that, I was like, oh, shit, <laughs> I'm, I'm ready, I'm ready to get started. So um, they give you a table here with uh, astrological and Kabbalistic associations to the major arcana which is pretty sweet. And then because this is like the Tarot Illuminati book, the Major Arcana have, you know, full page printed images of um, what's on the card. So I'm just going to stick with the book um, and not bother making you look at the smaller printed images on the cards. But um, yeah, so we start with actually an optional card. This one is called the All Gifted, and it is represented by Pandora. I am a fan of this already because of um, my favorite deck in the world being the Prisma Visions Tarot um, by the artist James Eads actually has a 79th optional card called the Gift. So I feel like um, this has somewhat of a, uh, a companionship to that deck, and I really enjoy the Gift as a th you know, an archetypal theme being added to the tarot cards. I feel like um, it's a boon in that instance. And, in, you know, in this deck, it's represented by Pandora, and she's kind of like the quote-unquote mascot of the tarot apocalypse. So I am I'm a fan of that. I, I've always loved the story of Pandora, and I've also... Um, I've always loved her as kind of a tragic figure. <laughs> because, you know, in, in the Greek myth she is the first woman ever created kind of like the biblical eve and um she is given this immense responsibility to take care of this box 
<laughs> that has all of the horrors of mankind inside it. So it's a terrible uh, burden for the first woman ever created to bear, just like, you know, I mean, Eve is pretty much the same way. But, you know, the gift as, um, uh, you know, a theme in tarot is really important to me. And there's been a lot of um, gift sort of symbolism in the you know, spell work that I've been doing throughout the past year. And when I saw this card and I saw some of the butterflies and some of the other imagery, there are some irises here and irises have been kind of big for me right now. Um, this card immediately spoke to me. So from, you know, from the very first card, yes, <laughs> definitely loving this deck. Um, the full card is one of my favorites, actually. And um, it's because it's kind of minimalist compared to some of the other cards. So the Fool is represented by the Mevlevi Suvi Sama Ceremony. Um, I apologize if I pronounce that incorrectly, but it is the Dance of the Whirling Dervish. And he is, uh, like all fools, sort of um, in a risky situation. He is sort of atop this pinnacle of rock, the gaping gorge below threatening to swallow him. But it is also this ecstatic dance and, you know, the thrill-seeking pleasure of the Fool card is definitely represented. So in that way, I really feel like this deck is has drawn very poetic parallels between sort of, um, you know, these stories throughout time, but also with very relevant um, symbolism of tarot and uh, the tarot as we know it. And there are some uh, some different interpretations of some of the cards in here that I'm a fan of. Um, I'll get into that in a moment, but uh, this is the Magician card, and who boy, this has got some wopow to it. Um, if any of you have read the Old Testament of the Bible, this is, I believe, from the book of Ezekiel, I think. <laughs> it's either... Uh, see, I'm drawing a blank because... I have to say, I don't have a very good attention span for the Bible, especially the Old Testament. But I do remember the symbolism from the Old Testament as one of the um, the sort of messengers, the angels that appears, um, I believe, in the book of Ezekiel. But you can correct me if I'm wrong. And, um, you know, there is there is some like sort of wrath of God coming out of this card for me. And it's super spooky and very surreal. Like this guy is obviously hovering. There's like this void of light below him where there's just like a mega shadow um, under this blood red sky. And then this crazy <laughs> surrealist angel. Yeah, just like the ancient symbolism on this card. Ah, <laughs> You'll hear me making that noise quite a lot. <laughs> Uh, so the High Priestess is uh, represented by Persephone, and the, let's see if I can pronounce this, Eleusinian Mysteries of Ancient Greece. Again, I will have opportunities to really delve into the details of the representations of these cards, but I am already super impressed. There's the Empress. And the emperor. Ah, so my my next favorite card is actually the hierophant, and the hierophant in, in this deck is represented by the Dalai Lama, and I really like this as sort of um, uh, readdressing the interpretation of the hierophant because I feel like in past decks in sort of classical tarot, um, the hierophant is often a very strict mentor figure. And um, I like using the Dalai Lama as a representation of the Hierophant. In, it's very different. It's very spiritually different, and it evokes a different feeling. So I was uh, appreciative of that. Here's the lover's card. Mm. Chariot. Strength being represented by Durga, which I thought was another beautiful parallel. Yeah, so this is really different, you guys. Really different. Very creative 
I'm, I'm really impressed with this deck. The wheel. Oh, I like this one too. This one kind of uh, tickles my pagan funny bone. I love uh, the depiction of Demeter, and she's sort of slouched over the wheel of the year <laughs> as the steward of the seasons. And of course, I love the colors. And uh, yeah, beautiful, beautiful artwork. I love this uh, justice as the Egyptian weighing of the heart on the scale with the feather. Try to go through these kind of quickly. It's got some Mexican mysteries in here as well. Ah, the Temperance card is another um, sort of reinterpretation. Maybe something that was, I mean, like in the Temperance card in other decks has to do with sort of um, self-management, I think, you know, the balance of not, not overindulging and stuff like that. And I feel like alchemy is sort of counterintuitive in that way because there was something, you know, sort of balls to the wall experimental. <laughs> about uh, alchemy in the past, you know, they were trying to find the elixir of life and, you know, have never-ending wealth and all of this stuff. So, you know, <laughs> I feel like there's a difference there and it's it's worth sort of exploring later. Ah, uh, the, the devil card is uh, represented by the imagined witch's sabbat, which I imagine is uh, the the sort of medieval rumoring. <laughs> of what what witches did in those days. Um, there's just some really cool ones. Ah, the star. Okay, so I should say something about this because, oh god, the moment I saw this, I was like, yep, I am glad I bought this deck. So the star um, has had heavy imagery in the spell work that I've done this year. Um, I've been focusing on the star, not just because I like the card, but also because um, I was using the potential aspect of the star card in some of my transformation work in the past couple months with my name change and all of that. And um, in the months leading up to that, I had gone to one of our local thrift stores and found a, um, a Mary statue that had just the most horrendous paint job I've ever seen in my life. And she's now sitting on my altar, sort of um, redressed as a star goddess. So the fact that the star card in this deck is represented by the cult of the Virgin Mary is just, I mean, it's got to be a sign, right? I feel like that's the universe talking to me <laughs> and really giving me an opportunity to delve further into something that's already had a tremendous impact on my life just in the past couple of months. So yes, <laughs> there is a big yes coming out of this image. And um, ugh, this this just continues to feel like the right decision. I am I am so pleased by that. Ah, uh, the moon card is represented by Hecate, and um, I like I like how surreal this image is of the moon between these two mountains, sort of t more towards the foreground than it would be up in the sky. So there's, you know, a real sense of magnitude and power there. And then you've got the line of devotees all holding torches in the background. That is a really... I like the color scheme of this card also. Deep blues, very dreamy. Um, judgment is represented by the Great Flood, and the information in this book references great floods of different uh, cultures, different myths. And then the world card, um, represented by Sophia in Gnosticism. Um, I know that there are a lot of online pagans, one or two in particular, um, on YouTube that are Gnostic Pagans. So hopefully that touches one of you. I was thinking about y'all. So yeah, in conclusion, I am so, so pleased with this purchase. So thanks for sitting with me today while I stumble through <laughs> the Major Arcana and give you my, my thoughts on the Tarot Apocalypsis. Um, I would recommend this deck to anybody. Let me know in the comments if this is something that you're interested in purchasing or um, if you already have and you love it. And until next time, everybody, sweet dreams.